Good morning and welcome to day three here of the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. What an amazing event we've had so far. Here on the live stream we're bringing you all the live up-to-date action as it happens. So that's the heats, the semi-finals and of course those all-important finals. So make sure you stay tuned because for the rest of the morning we'll be showing you all of the live heats and equally this evening we'll be showing you all the live finals at well as well starting at 10 to 6 tonight. That's 17.50. Make sure you're back here to watch the action. Now I'm not alone here uh, doing the live stream. I've got an expert, an open water expert. I'm, I'm sure you have heard of the name of Kerry Ann Payne. I've said so many times it's great to have you here Kerry Ann. So welcome again to day three. Thank you very much. It's, um, it's such a joy to be here. I've really enjoyed the last two days. Um, it's really nice to talk about all the swimmers, to talk about what they're doing, how they're doing it and to see all the improvements that everybody's been trying to make this year. And again for you to be on this side because it's great to have your expert knowledge you know these swimmers very well I mean you train with a lot of them anyway and on the same team as a lot of them and yeah. you know all the behind the scenes gossip which is what we love <laughs> to hear you've had so many great stories to tell us as well about families and friends of, of swimmers so let's get back to the action for the yes. last two days what's been a highlight for you so far so a highlight for me last night was Roberto Pavoni in the 400 meters individual medley uh, he sneaked under the nomination time for the for the, the England Commonwealth Games team so I think that was an outstanding swim from him. I'm not sure even if he thought that he would be able to do such a fast time on his own. He, he was swimming on his own pretty much for the whole whole way. So that was a really, really great swim for, for me anyway. Indeed. And when, when you say about the nomination time, because yes. do you want to just elaborate a little bit more about that? Because it's quite, <laughs> quite complex. But for those people that have yes. just tuned in, what is what do you mean by the nomination time? So there's the not any qualification times. It's a bit more of a, um, of a nomination time. So there is a, a benchmark been set and the times where the top three in the Commonwealth from September 2013 um, but the team for the England team will be picked based on their FINA rank so if they're highly ranked enough if they're higher on the FINA ranking system yeah. then they'll predominantly be picked but if they're not high enough on that then they probably won't be picked because there's only 36 swimmers that, that can be nominated for the team. And the nomination times we've seen a lot of, of swimmers have gone in and around and underneath the nomination times haven't they? Yeah so on the first night I think we had five nomination times which is great on the first night of the meet that's exactly what we wanted to see. Um, we had a couple last night as well so we're on day two of the meet and you know we're already around about six or seven people that have been under the nomination time so the team hopefully will start to look a little clearer to us anyway uh, towards the end of the week and we've, we've said before as well that, that swimmers will find out on Wednesday yes. of next week if they've been nominated for the team so it's all to swim for isn't it all to swim for today as well we're kicking off day three yes. so what are you looking forward to watching this morning for the well heat? there's the, the 200 fly I'm really looking forward to seeing that so this is the first time that we'll have Joe Roebuck um, on the scene so Joe was a bit like Elizabeth Simmons last season and Liam Tang that he didn't make an international team so he'll be here trying to make sure that he's back on this team on this international team and then we have Roberto Pavoni back in again to do to do his event today so I think uh, it should be quite an interesting swim this morning from those guys and Roberto Pavoni back in again yeah an evening of, of rest and recovery to get back in the pool yeah so he'll have had to go back last night he'll have to try to get all of the, the nice feelings out of his system you know from doing that time and winning last night and he'll have to kind of get his head back in the game get in the this morning do the job that he has to do and how much of a confidence boost will that be for him to have had such a great swim yeah. last night moving forwards for the rest of the meet well it just takes the pressure off him really in a way um, that he doesn't feel like he has to, to swim his absolute max to make sure that he gets a nomination time because he kind of has a nomination time now it doesn't mean that he, he needs to stop swimming completely because if he can get a quicker time for the tuna butterfly then that would be great but it kind of takes a little bit of the pressure off him that he can just concentrate on swimming, swimming fast Indeed, and we'll see the likes of Liam Tancock, Francesca Halsall back again. Um, yeah. Probably two swimmers to highlight yesterday, maybe didn't swim as, as well as what they would have liked to have swum, but it's, yeah. again, they've got plenty of, of events, haven't they? Yeah, well, Liam, you know, he's been really injured, uh, only got back in the water in January, so his preparation has hardly been what it normally would have been anyway. So I think he did a, a good job, you know, coming back and being in the water. You know, he was number two in Britain, not probably what he was hoping. I think every time you come to a meet like this, no matter if you've been injured or not, you always have this little hope in your mind that actually, you know what, who knows, maybe I could do it. So 
he came here, I'm sure, with that in his mind. And then Fran yesterday, she swam really well in the 50, in the semi-final of the 50 freestyle. And then she swam, you know, she swam a, a good 100 fly, but Rachel Kelly, her training partner from Loughborough, kind of just came past Fran and Siobhan Marie O'Connor right in the last sort of 15 metres of the race. Out of nowhere, was yeah. it? I mean, we heard on the commentary that the top two were, were talked about. And then out of nowhere, that was a great swim from her, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, she just had a storming finish, which on 100 is, is a really important thing to have if you can have that finish because it's such a sprint event using so much lactic acid in your body that you need to be able to kind of make sure that the last 15 meters is as strong as the first 15 meters and that's exactly what Rachel Kelly did last night. So that was for the 100 so we're moving on today to, to some 50s um, yeah. for the, the splash and dash events. How do they differ then from the 100s? So the 50s are quite interesting in that it is a splash and dash you just have to kind of put your head down and you have to go for it so no matter what event it is you just have to really focus on on the power and on the speed but not slipping your stroke so Ross last night mentioned slipping strokes on the 50s you don't want to go so hard that you're not catching all the water but you want to kind of make sure that your stroke rate is the highest that it possibly can be indeed well we kick off the the morning session with the men's 200 meter butterfly heats we're going to hand you over to Bob Ballard and Joanne Jackson for the commentary Thank you very much indeed both for getting us underway on day three. Approaching the halfway stage of the British Swimming 2014 Championships here in Glasgow. And very good morning to you and a very good morning for the first time on the microphone up here. She's normally down at pool deck, but up in the gods with me is Joe Jackson. Morning. Morning, and it's great to be here this morning. And it's great to have you along. 200 Butterfly, we're looking at heat number one. Seven going to start. Give you the lineup in just a moment after they're underway. Leon Birchie of Hillingdon is in one. James Ellison of Bracknell in two. Callum Glanning of Cleethorpe's three. Harrison Day of Leeds in four. Daniel Brown of City of Peterborough in five. Thomas Howdell of Nova Centurion in six. And Joseph Hume of Plymouth Neander. Tell me about your butterfly stories, Joe. I used to be a butterfly swimmer when I was a junior swimmer. My first European juniors, I went for the 200 fly. So, you know, it's great to be here watching and, you know, later on in the day we've got Joseph Roebuck coming up who had a very disappointing year last year he just moved to Bath so it'll be great to see how he gets on and also Roberta Pavoni who had a great 400 medley last night so early stages uh, the 50 early way is underway they're approaching the halfway stage and of course it's the uh, bouncing off the top of the water we're looking at with the butterfly all hips all rotation and trying to get those arms as extended as you can it's a very tough event the old lactate certainly building up in the legs and seeing whether the city of Leeds swimmer Harrison Day could get to the wall first at the halfway stage. He's going to do that at 59. No, it's not actually. Just edged out by James Ellison. Only three one hundredths of a second between them. Ellison in first place, Harrison Day in second, and Leon Birchie in third for Hillingdon. Yeah, that was a great first hundred for James Ellison there. But the two hundred fly is such a difficult event to pace. If you go out too hard for that first one hundred, they will feel that on the last fifty. So hopefully they've set the pace really nicely and they'll feel strong down that last fifty. I'm watching. Thomas, uh, sorry, Joseph Hume have an absolute storming third 50 here. And from not really being in the picture at 100, all of a sudden he's come right to the fore and is leading Harrison Day by three one hundredths of the turn. Yeah, it's going to be a very close race here. Joseph Hume's looking very strong out in lane seven. He's definitely one of the outside burners, but he's looking really good. He just needs to hold on for this final 25 metres. That was a blistering 50. As you're saying, they're coming back to him. Harrison Day in lane number four. Daniel Neil Brown in lane number five, but he's probably just about got enough in the tank, or has he? Also coming through late on is James Ellison in two from Bracknell. He might take it. Lane two for James Ellison. 206.92. That race changed complexion so many times from 100 to 200. We've probably had about four different leaders. James Ellison, 206.92 is his time, and that's the first time he's been in the 206 region. Second place going to Joseph Hume, and Daniel Brown in third. As always, yeah, that was a great final 50 for James Ellison there. First time, like I said, 206, a massive PB for him. So for a first heat, that was a great swim, and he'll be really pleased with that. On to heat number two of the men's 200 metres butterfly. Big names, of course, to come in the cyclically seeded heats later on. But we're going to watch the likes 
of James Bull, North Centurion in one, Liam Selby, Stockport Metro in two, Kuja Urata of Oxford University in three, James Black of Warrender in four, Ben Roberts of Wolverhampton in five, Callum Noche of Ellesmere in six, Kyle Chisholm of Borough Kirklees in seven, and James Flanagan of the city of Cardiff in lane eight. As we saw in the last race, Joe, it doesn't really start to unravel this one until the, probably the last 50, certainly the last 100 anyway. Yeah, if they go out too strong in the 200 flight, they will struggle down that last 50. And we saw that happen. And we saw that it was an outside burner. He came from nowhere and he left that for the last 25 metres. But we've seen that, you know, they're going out really strong here and they're looking really good. But they need to save that, that energy for the last 100 on the 200 butterfly. At the first turn, it was Liam Selby of Softball Metro. And he's, uh, that lane two seems to be uh, very obliging from a butterfly point of view this morning because he's having a, a flying start. And 100, of course, has a great pedigree of butterfly swimmers, only 200 butterfly swimmers at Stockport, because James Hickman was there for a while. Steve Barry, of course, got his bronze medal at the Olympics when he was at Stockport Metro. Yeah, Stockport's been a great program. They had Michael Rock there as well, so they've had a lot of world-class fly swimmers, so it's great to see him swimming so well at the moment, and Liam Selby looks really, really strong, but I just hope he hasn't gone out that too quick and he'll start to fade in the last 50, but at the moment he is looking strong down this third 50. First of best of 2.07.07. He'll be massively inside that if he could keep up the pace. Now, this is, Steve Barry always used to say to me, this is where the elephant jumps on your back. Last 50 of the fly is when all of a sudden you feel like you're carrying lead weights on your shoulders. Yeah, I remember watching Steve Parry in the 2004 Olympic Games while I was there and, you know, it, that, down that last 20 metres, he just went for it. So he's a very great 200 fly swimmer, so they'll be looking for inspiration from him. Looks like the man who's led from the front is going to lead all the way to the end. This has been an impressive display by the 22-year-old Liam Selby from Stockport Metro. Now 207, remember, this is nothing like a 207. This is a 204.28. That is a massive PB. Three seconds, no less, for Liam Selby winning that. Callum Noche in second place and third going to Kyle Chisholm in 206.93. That is a huge chunk. He's just taking out his PB. Yeah, that's a great swim. If you can see him here finishing, he looked really tight in that last five meters but he finished with his head down he finished really strong and a 2-0 that time is just a great swim this morning for him 204 28 the winning time for liam selby two and a half seconds quicker than anybody else in that field alistair miley the brother of hannah miley goes in heat number three He's in one for Geary. Two is Daniel Jones of Plymouth. City of Birmingham represented by Kieran Smith. Ryan Brown, best in four. Kevin Wallbank of DaVencio, five. Ricky Morris of Coventry in six. Felix Gifford of Aberdeen in seven. And Luke Buxton of the City of Sheffield in eight. Remember, unlike most other competitions, we normally go into a semi-final for the 200, but here it's straight to final. Yeah, like you said, it does go straight to finals here. This is the first time they've done that, so the swimmers need to remember that they need to have a strong heat from this morning. And, and, you know, they're going to have to do that at the Commonwealth Games if they make the time to get into the final at the Commonwealth World Championships. You need to have a strong heat, so it's great practice for them. Kevin Wallback of DaVencio is trying to do a similar job to what Liam Selby did in the previous heat and set the pace and try and hold on and try and keep the pace going all the way through. And he's got a reasonable advantage, so they are starting to come back to him as it comes to the conclusion of the first 100 metres. Kevin Wallback of DaVencio will touch the wall first, but not a big gap between him and the rest. Second place is Daniel Jones of Plymouth. He's second. Third is Luke Buxton. Turning time for the leader, 58.03. That was a great first 100 for Kevin Warbank, but Daniel Jones is on his shoulder, and they're both looking very strong at the moment, but there's still all those swimmers that are neck and neck in the minute behind them for that third place, so they're going to have to keep going. They need to keep looking strong in their race. Talking about how the races are swum these days, very few races are swum where you take it easy early on and get sw swim faster and more aggressively later on. You have to be fairly aggressive from the start these days if you want to be competing at world level. And it's been a very aggressive and so far very impressive swim by Kevin Wallbanks. But this is where it's going to hurt, and they are starting to come back to him now. Yeah, and you can see over in lane eight, Luke Buxton as well has a, had a great third 50 there, and he's coming back really strong, and he does look like he's taking the lead for this. Well, the City of Sheffield are having a very, very good week. Now, is it going to be Kevin Warbank or is it going to be Luke Buxton? Tight, tight, very tight. Just Warbank in 204.00. 
Second place to Luke Buxton in a 204.63. Now, his previous best was a 206.20, so that's a massive increase for him. And indeed for Kevin Warbank as well into uh, territory he hasn't been in before. And third place going to Ryan Brown in 205.51. Just maybe worth saying that, uh, Joe, how things have changed maybe in the last 10 years. The way people approach races these days is you know, there used to be kind of a pattern where you'd work into a race and you'd get quicker and quicker. But now if you don't attack it early on, you're not up with everybody else. Yeah, definitely. You see the 200s at the minute, the 200 freestyle, the 200 breaststroke, backstroke. It's more like a sprint now. It used to be 1500 that were the sprints, but 200 is turning into a sprint and they need to go out strong to stay with the rest of the field. I'll run through that in one to eight for you again after they're underway. Chris Suggett of Swansea in one, Tom Sunter of Sheffield in two, Adam Mallett of Swansea three, Matt Johnson of Bath University, formerly of Sheffield in four, Cameron Brody of Kelly in five, Tom Hatfield of City of Cardiff had a dreadful 400 IM by his own admission yesterday. He said on Twitter yesterday, the worst 400 IM he's ever had. So hopefully he might be picking things up on his lesser event. Uh, and then Kevin and David Maxwell of City of Leeds in seven, Luke Greenbank of Cockermouth goes in eight. That's finished the 50. How's it looking, Joe? Yeah, a few of these swimmers swam last night. So so hopefully they've recovered and got ready. But, you know, like you said, Tom Hatfield wasn't that happy with his 400 medley last night. He's already pre-qualified for the Welsh team, so hopefully he can come in for a stronger swim this morning. But it's Thomas Sunter from Sheffield has started off really well. You know, they're, they're having a very good race at the moment, but they just need to keep going really strong. Lane 5, Cameron Brody's not doing too badly either. It might just be Brody who leads at the halfway stage. Tom Sunter's up there in second place alongside Matt Johnson. They, of course, will know each other very well from their times in Sheffield. But Tom Sunter just taking the lead on that turn, very marginally. 57-5-0 plays 57-5-2 for Cameron Brody. It really was on the turn that he got that lead. Yeah, and Sheffield are having a great meet this week. Most finals have had Sheffield swimmers in, which is great to see. And, you know, they've come in here. They've wanted to get their nomination times the Commonwealth Games and are doing really well. Tom Santa just falling off the base a little bit, certainly compared to Cameron Brody, who's had a very positive and very aggressive third 50. 128.87. Now Santa is into second place. Matt Johnson making his way through. Always the back end strong for Matt Johnson. Yeah, Matt Johnson does a number of events 400 medley, 200 fly, 200 medley. So he's got a great back end. So he just needs to put his head down now and finish strong to be able to make that final tonight. Top eight time, so they really have to go for it in the morning. There's no holding back. There's no thinking, well, I could do it later on in the day. There may not be a later on in the day as far as they're concerned. Cameron Brody is going to win this just from Matt Johnson with Adam Mallett coming in in third place. Time for the winner is the closest we've got to two minutes so far. 2-0-0-43 is the winning time for the winner. That is Cameron Brody. In second place, Matt Johnson, 2 0, zero 98. And third place going to Adam Mallett in a 2 2 10. All those results are confirmed. So uh, Cameron Brody uh, has done a sub two, as indeed is Matt Johnson. So neither of them quite in that ballpark this morning. Yeah, both Kath Cameron and Matt had two very strong swims there, both going two minutes. So, you know, hopefully that can put them in contention for the final tonight. Two more heats to come. We're into the cyclically seeded heats now. And there's Roberto Pavoni back again. 400 IM English champion, English record holder going in for. Rest on the swimmers, Luke Gunning of Beckenham in one, Thomas Bain of City of Manchester Aquatics in two, Jay Lelliot, who had a fantastic swim with the 400 free on the opening day, goes in three, then Lewis Smith in five for University of Stirling, Ross Muir in six for the same club, Loughborough represented by Adam Fall, and Gareth Mills, who also had a big improvement in his 200 freestyle last night, goes in the 200 butterfly today. It's great to see Roberto back in after that brilliant 400 medley last night where he got the nomination time for the 400. So he's going to be on a high after that he's going to be feeling really strong and he'll want to put in a good heat this morning and he has started off really well he was first to 50 there and he's looking really strong but we saw Lewis Smith as well last night have a really strong 400 medley so he will not be wanting to get too far away from him tell me about the breathing on butterfly because I'm watching Roberto Fernie he's pretty much looking to the, the left all the time how often do you breathe in butterfly yeah everyone is different some people breathe to the front some people breathe to the side when I used to swim I used to breathe to the front in every two strokes but you know if you're doing a sprint event you won't breathe as much going into the 200 fly you will breathe a little bit more and it also depends how tired you are on the last 50 you'll see some of them starting to breathe every single stroke just to get the breath in 
Well, Roberto Pavoni would seem to have already, even at this stage, at uh, the 100 or coming towards the 150 mark, this race in the bag. But I'm keeping an eye on Gareth Mills on the outside lane because he is having a stormer here for City of Sheffield. And Roberto Pavoni will not be aware of him because he's in lane four, Mills in lane eight, and they should be pretty much the one two. In fact, Jay Leniot has uh, snuck up into second place, but uh, Roberto Pavoni should have this under control. But Jay Leniot has other ideas. Yeah, Jay there had a great third 50 and he is pulling back on Roberto. Roberto is starting to look a little bit tired, whether he's tired from last night or whether he's just easing back, but Jay is having a great last 50 here. Well, Jay Leniot has never been under two minutes. He's got a good chance of doing that here. And Roberto Pavoni looks like he might possibly get beaten though. He's a big champion is Roberto Pavoni. He doesn't want to be beaten. 159.22 and he isn't beaten. He just edges out Jay Leniot by 15 one hundredths of a second. But Jay Leniot breaks the two-minute barrier for the first time in his career. Lewis Smith in third place and fourth is Thomas Payne. Just keep an eye on Gareth Mills' time. 2.02.63 it was in here for Gareth Mills. It's a big PB and I thought for a while he might be challenging but he kind of lost it on the last 50. Yeah, and that was a great time for Jay Leliot there. The first time under two minutes and the 200 fly for men is like the 200 freestyle for women we want to get under that two minute barrier and he's done that so we'll be really pleased with how he's just done final heat coming up of the men's 200 meters butterfly keep an eye on lane number four joe roebuck Sean Campsey of Warrender in one, El Rashenko of City of Coventry in two, Michael Gunning, Stockport in three, Joe Roebuck aforementioned from Bath in four, Luke Howdell of Nova in five, Lewis Smith, Swansea in six, ben Kerry, Benjamin Kerry of City of Salford in seven, and Craig Bauman of Carnegie goes in lane eight after a very troubled year. Joe Roebuck just not quite on the base. He'll be looking to put that right and rectify that in 2014. Yeah, Joe was very disappointed with his year last year. He missed the world's team, so he had no international meet last year but he's down in battle with David McNulty and speaking to David and Joe training has been going really well for him you know, he was really excited to be here and he's really excited about the Commonwealth Games this year so he will want to put in a strong heat performance this morning to ensure that he gets through to the final tonight and of course this is a swimmer who's been 156 so none of your two minutes with him it's 156 49 is his best time so he should be a lot better than anybody else in this field but of course he is coming back into fitness and coming back into form we hope at least he's leading at the one 100 stage 56.26 for Joe Roebuck, Michael Gunning in second for Stockport Metro again they're having a good week as well and Luke Howdell in third place and they're certainly going to push Joe Roebuck all the way which is probably what he wants in a heat swim. Yeah you need someone to push you you know in the past years you've seen people go out hard in the 200 fly and they've had no one there to push them and they've struggled so if they've got Michael Gunning next to him in lane number three pushing them all the way Joe will see him and he will want to get that touch but Michael Gunning had a great third 50 there He's come up and he's looking really strong. He just needs to continue that down the last length. Well, Michael Gunning again is another swimmer who has never been sub two minutes. Well, the chances are he's going to do that and do it by quite some way here. Michael Gunning looking very good in third lane. And uh, Joe Roebuck has got uh, a couple of swimmers who think they can overtake him here. One has overtaken him in Michael Gunning. Luke Howdle has also given Joe Roebuck a few problems. And uh, Joe Roebuck needs to find something at the end here to get second place. He's going to get second place, I think, but certainly the winner is undoubtedly. In fact, we have joint second place with uh, Roebuck and Howdle. But Michael Gunning again has gone sub two minutes. 1.59.13 for Michael Gunning, which is the fastest time of the morning. Joe Roebuck and Luke Howdle with 1.59.71s comfortably through to tonight's final nonetheless. Let's see at the end of that race. Yeah, that was a great swim for Michael Gunning, a great finish as well. You can see him putting his head down and getting that touch. And a 1.59.1, it's a really positive swim for him. First time under two minutes, so he'll be really pleased with that. And that is going to be a great final tonight. We've got quite a few swimmers under two minutes. So confirmation three going sub two there. Joe Roebuck we expected, but uh, both Michael Gunning and Luke Howdle doing things that uh, maybe were unexpected, certainly by us. Anyway, 1.59.13 and 1.59.71. So, Kerry ann no room for errors there. We go straight to finals. It's important, as we said last night, starts, turns, finishes, but turns in particular on that butterfly. Yeah, so 
the butterfly is it's a really technical stroke you have to make sure that the whole way through the swim you are concentrating on your stroke count so that when you get to the wall you finish on a full stroke because if you finish on a half a stroke the momentum isn't quite as much and if you can see here we're coming up to the last turn Roberto hits it perfectly but then if you watch Jay Lelia in the lane below him he has a much better turn and comes up right next to him um, you know and at the end of the race it was really close and I think Roberto had to work a little harder this morning than he wanted to but he'll have to work on his turns for tonight indeed and, and like you say getting the the stroke count correct so for people that don't know what you mean particularly about stroke count because it yeah. will differ in a, a competition because yeah. you're swimming faster than potentially you would be in training yeah so well in, you... in training we, we practice that so we practice when we do a race pace set to make sure that our stroke count our stroke rate is at a specific point so that when we come to a race it's easy it's something you don't really have to think about it just kind of happens but I'm really really pleased for Michael Gunning then uh, from Stockport Metro he had such a great 400 freestyle on the first day and to go so far under two minutes as well for the fly I'm really pleased for him looking forward to the finals tonight so we move on now to the women's 200 meter breaststroke heats and to be honest, it's an event in which Britain is not that strong at the moment. The last real world-class breaststroker we had at this discipline was Kirsty Balfour. We're talking about 10 years ago, pretty much. Here. So we need to step up to the plate, Britain, here. In the 200 breaststroke, this is the time to do it. We'll watch the youngsters first having their crack at this event. Lucy Davis of Western Supermare in two. Danielle Gilbert of Derwentside in two. Emily Wood of City of Oxford in four. Sarah Tripp of Rush Moore in five. And Katie Hodgson of Guildford in six. Do you have a theory, Joe Jackson, as to why our distance breaststrokers have not been that great over the last ten years? Yeah, we've always struggled with the 200 breaststroke. We had Jamie King to start with, then went on to Kirsty Balfour. And Stacey Dad Tad did start coming through the rankings, but she never made it into an international final to get a medal for Team GB so we have struggled and you know Molly Renshaw came through a couple of years ago but unfortunately the last two years she has missed the qualifying times for the Olympics the World Championship so you know I'm looking forward to watching Molly later she's recently just moved to Kev Renshaw in Loughborough University so you know her training could have changed she could be here to produce a really good swim but you know even our 100 breaststroke we had Kate Haywood but we never had a, a pure class international 100 breaststroke so, you know, we've got Siobhan coming up in a few days for the 100 breaststroke, so hopefully we can start to improve that because that 4 by 100 medley relay is such a fantastic medal chance for Great Britain and the breaststroke does seem to let us down, so we do need to improve on that. Just give you an idea of the gap between the rest of the world and Great Britain, really. Molly Renshaw is our fastest swimmer in the 200 breaststroke this year, 2.26.38. The fastest time of the world is 2.19, so she is seven seconds shy of the fastest time of the world. That's a big, big gap. There is a a huge gap but you know she might shock us here today she might have a great swim tonight and go a personal best which is what we want to see that's what we want to see is you know people watching and we want exciting races and we want them to go to the commonwealth games the world championships and you know chase for those medals because that's what we need as a team team england team scotland we need to bring home those medals so you know we do need to improve on the breaststroke because our boys breaststroke is just world class you look at the boys breaststroke races and you know there's so many world class swimmers in there and that's what we need to see in the Girls. That's so difficult to understand, but we'll talk about that another time because we want to see the conclusion of the 200 breaststroke first heat. Katie Hodgson is looking very comfortable and very good on this. She might be a name to watch the future, but again, that last 50 is proving to be a bit agonizing for her as we look at the center lane and suddenly Emily Wood is taking control. Yeah, the 200 breaststroke is such a tough race. I never did it, so, you know, it's just, I was not a breaststroke swimmer, but, you know, you've seen world-class swimmers go out too hard at 150 and really die on the last 50, so they have to pace it well, but, you know, they're finishing nice and strong here. Emily Wood's best time prior to today, 238.88. Can she get inside that? No, she can't. She's going to be outside. 240.34 is the first winning time in the heats of the 200 breaststroke, of which we have five. Second is Katie Hodgson of Guildford and third Lucy Davis. So whilst we uh, await for confirmation of that result, I'd love to know what the answer is, if indeed there is an answer, as to why we have so much depth in the men. There is the result, by the way, Emily Wood, 240-34, the winning time. So much depth in the men, certainly in the 100. Anyway, we have, we have breaststrokers, as far as the eyes can see, who are world class. You know, so many men and so few women. But uh, there's a 200 breaststroke heat number two line up for you. I'll run through that before we continue that conversation. Charlotte Holmes of Sheffield in one, Alice Tennant of Swansea in two, Lucy Bean of Guildford in three, 
Elizabeth Hopkins of Portsmouth in four, Jesse Foster of Aquasulis in five, Erin Nadney of Ealing in six, Erin Robertson of South Ayrshire in seven, Sophie Waller of Dover in eight. Is it just down to the fact that we have such a great tradition of male breaststrokers in Great Britain? We've got obviously the David Wilkies, Duncan Goodhue, Adrian Morehouse, Nick Gillingham, etc. Um, but apart from Anita Londra in 1960, we've never really had anybody that high profile women wise. No, and it's such a shame because you see all the other, other events moving on in the world, and for Great Britain, the breaststroke for the women hasn't seemed to move on. But you know, we saw the 50 breaststroke last night, and there were some strong performances in that. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the women's hundred women breaststroke as well because we saw Siobhan in the two and the three come out the blue and go 156, and she'll be doing the hundred breaststroke. And I really think she's having a really, really strong week, and it's going to be on fire. So she could be the one to hit to produce that great hundred breaststroke swim to help Team GB for 2016 in Rio. Well, I think Siobhan's turning into the Hannah Miley of England, isn't she, in terms of the fact she's doing IM, she's doing breaststroke, she's doing pretty much all the card now, she's doing freestyle as well, so uh, perhaps she's uh, trying to emulate Hannah Miley. Halfway stage of this one, by the way, Jessie Foster, 114.39 leads, and that's uh, a lead of about three quarters of a second from Alice Tennant in second place, and third at the turn was Lucy Bean of Guildford. Yeah, Alice Tennant is looking really strong in lane two, she seems to be coming back on this third fifth. And they just need to keep the breaststroke really long and smooth. They don't want to rush the breaststroke. They don't want to miss the catch because that's where, you know, they can start tiring up too much. So they just need to keep that really long and focus on the kick at the end of the stroke. Jesse Foster in lane five. Just having a, a very impressive swim here. That was a good 50 from her. 154.12. She's taken a sizable advantage over Alice Tennant going into the last 50. Just have a quick look down and see what her best time, Jesse Foster. Foster is 235.89 is her best time, so I think uh, she might be honing, honing in on that. But uh, out of her sight and also out of our sight for a little while there was uh, lane two, Alice Tennant of Swansea University, who suddenly finds something probably not quite enough to overtake the leader at this stage. No, Jessie's having a great swim. She's pulling away from the rest of the swimmers and is looking really strong on this last five metres, and it's going to be a great swim for her this morning. 2.34.38 is a new personal best time for Jesse Foster. Alice Tennant in 2.36.80 in second place. That is uh, just a personal best by eight one hundredths of a second for her. And third place going to Elizabeth Hopkins. So uh, job pretty much done for them. Again, just to remind you, where normally we would have semi-finals and finals for the 200 events, here it's straight to finals, so only top eight will progress. Apart from the junior final, of course. So if you're a junior, you get a chance to have a go again. Yeah, so a lot of these swimmers that are swimming now will get that junior final, so they will hopefully get that second chance to be able to do another strong performance. Silas for the third heat of the 200 breaststroke for women. And City of Derby is Danielle Lowe. What a great story that is with Adam Peaty and uh, Mel Marshall, who you swam with in the freestyle days when you two were actually quite uh, great competitors, weren't you, in, in the 200 freestyle? And uh, she's turned into a great coach. What happened to you? Why didn't you go into coaching? <laughs> I don't think I could do the hours that coaches do, but, you know, Mel was a great athlete. I loved racing with Mel and I loved training with her, and she's got such a great program over at Derby now with Adam Peaty and the breaststroke. And, you know, Danielle Lowe has just moved there recently. I went out to Zambia with where they're on a training camp with them and she is such a strong trainer she's a bit of a beast in the water which is great to see and she had a really strong 400 medley last night so it'll be great to see how she gets on in the 200 today quick marker for you on what she's done previously 228 24 is her best time prior to this i expect it with all mel marshall swimmers them to go much faster in the heats and then if there is a semi a semi and then a final if they go straight to final and uh, i'm liking the the aggression and the attack if you like of Danielle Lowe in this one she comes to the halfway stage in the 200 breaststroke she's opened up about a two body length advantage over Abby Wood to her left and to her right is Olivia White 1 11 34 well, she's on course for a big PB if she can back this up yeah that's a great first 100 for Danielle Lowe I hope she hasn't gone out too quick and then hurts down that last 50 but she's pulling away from the rest of the field and you know I've seen a train she's such a strong girl and she looks it when she's swimming she looks really long and powerful 
beautiful in the water. So, you know, she could be one to watch for the future. She's still really young and she's exper experimenting with different events at the moment. So it'll be great to see her produce a great 200 breaststroke. So what Mel does, she creates swimmers in her image. <laughs> it, it's all aggression. It's all yeah. attack. There's no holding back. There's no soft side. It's just go for broke. Yeah, I used to be scared of her when I used to race against her. We'd be in the car room and she'd stare you out. And I would be so scared that she was going to jump on me one day. But she's so soft at heart. You know, I used to love training with her and I was loved being on the relay with her. And, you know, she's got this program set up at the moment at Derby and it's really working for them all. Well, Daniel Lowe is going to win this and she's going to win it by some considerable margin provided she doesn't fade over the last 15 to 20 metres and uh, we'll keep an eye on that clock. That's the important thing from her point of view as well. Can she get around the uh, 2.25 mark? Well, she's probably not going to be quite there but 2.28.24 was her previous best. Come on, you can get in there. Get in there. You've got a couple of seconds margin here. She's just going to be outside that, so not quite, but uh, that will hopefully come later on in the day. 2.29 so our first sub 2.30 swim of the morning. 2.29.06 for her. She did win it by a considerable distance by three seconds or more in the end with second place to Abby Wood and third Olivia White. Oh, that's hurt, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> He's got a face. She did start to fade down that last five metres, but she did have a great heat from there, and I think she'll be pleased with how that went. 2.29.06, big lead of Abby Wood in second, Olivia White in third. On to heat number four of the women's 200 metres breaststroke. Hello, it's Hannah Miley with Amy Wilmot, two of our big names, two of our 400 IM swimmers side by side. We're away, and uh, this will be interesting because they didn't get a chance to race in the 400 IM earlier in the week. I was really looking forward to that when I came up here thinking Amy Wilmot against Hannah Miley in the 400 IM, but uh, Patrick Miley decided it wasn't quite right for her on the opening. So, so Amy has to do it all by herself. They're going to go head to head in the breaststroke instead. Yeah, I think we were all a little bit disappointed that we didn't see that head to head between Hannah and Amy, but it's great to see them racing here now. They're both going to want to put in a great performance. They've got the 400 medley in the next few months at the Commonwealth Games. So, you know, I think they'll be fighting it out here to get those places but you know they've had a great start Hannah's had a great start in lane number four she's gone out in 34.1 so you know she's taking this heat really strong and she's going to want to put a foot down on this event and I tell you what's really great about Hannah it used to be her weakest stroke and became almost her strongest stroke because she worked so hard that she and Patrick her father and her coach uh, worked very very hard to say right that's what we need to because your 400 am is great apart from your breaststroke we need to look at that and then they started working on the butterfly but the breaststroke is unrecognizable now. Yeah, with a 400 medley, the breaststroke is one of the most important strokes in that event. You know, you see a lot of people win and lose the medley on the breaststroke, and Hannah always struggled with it, so it's great to see her doing so well. And, you know, she has a great relationship with her dad, who's a coach, and it's great to see her swimming really well. And, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how she does at the Commonwealth Games this year. It's a home Games for her. You know, the atmosphere in this pool is going to be electric, and it'll be great if that can boost her confidence to have a great swim. I always think of Patrick. As a, as, as a a plastic Scotsman in a way because he is an Englishman and uh, was she not born in England as well? I think she was yeah. Yeah. And, you know they've got such a strong relationship with each other which is so nice because I could never have my dad coach me so you know it's so it's working really well for them and she keeps going and going every year and you know having great performances she makes finals every single year and she's one of the most strong British swimmers This is going to be an interesting scrap down this last 50 because there's not much to choose between Hannah Miley in first place 150.2 10, 159.9 Amy Wilmot, but Hannah Miley is saying, hang on, I'm the better breaststroker here, and I'm going to show you I'm the better breaststroker here by taking this out, but uh, Amy Wilmot is responding. Has she got long enough to catch her? That's the question. I think Hannah's going to take this one. Hannah's not going to let her beat her. She's in there. She's, she's so tough, Hannah. She's really small, but really, really tough, and she's going to want to win this heat. Hannah has done a 2.28 before now. Not going to be 2.28 this morning, I don't think, just outside it. 2.28.80, actually it is a 2.28. 2.28.80 for Hannah Miley. That's a heat swim of uh, some impressive proportions. Amy Wilmot, 2.30.44. So that's a personal best for Amy as well. Good yeah. swim by her and third place going to Beth Ageson. It's great to see them girls producing personal bests in the heats because that's what they're going to have to do at the big games. And, you know, Hannah looks really happy with that swim. As you can see, she's always got a smile on her face, smiley Miley, which 
right, she's good. <laughs> Not quite as red. I don't know what she's done. She's not quite as red in the face these days as she used to be. 228.80. We used to get worried that she was going to explode because she suddenly went about, uh, she suddenly went like an orange and you go, I hope she's okay. Maybe she's not trying hard enough. No, I think she's still trying, but I, I, I don't know what. The, you remember the days when, when I first saw watched it? I was worried she was yeah. going to explode because her face went so red. She used to go purple sometimes. <laughs> 200 breaststroke, key number five. Last one coming up. The big names are here. Sorry, Hannah Marley, but in terms of breaststroke, here they come. Including the swimmer we were focusing on there in lane number four, Molly Renshaw. This needs to be, I think, for her, her breakthrough year. She got very close to making the Olympic team in 2012. A few technicalities as to why she didn't going to go over that again. But the fact she got really, really close. Now, I don't know whether that set her back a bit or what, because she thought she was going to be on the Olympic team and then finally wasn't on the Olympic team. Yeah, and it must be so hard as an athlete to, you know, think that you're going to the Olympic Games to get that taken away. And she was really disappointed. And, you know, it is going to knock her back. It will have knocked her confidence a lot but she needs to you know move on from that you know every athlete has setbacks in their career but they need to take the positives from that and come back fighting strong she should be wanting to get in here now and make that commonwealth team and even win medals but she's got sophie taylor in lane five that had a great 50 breaststroke last night and you know she's one of the younger ones coming through and that's what we need to see swimmers like sophie coming through and fighting for them positions and he made the point and it's quite right to make the point we do need a world-class 100 breaststroker for our medal because we've got great freestyle, we've got great butterfly, um, we've got great backstroke, but we just at the moment did not have somebody to do that fourth component part of the uh, of the medley. But maybe we've got them coming up here. Maybe Molly Renshaw is going to show us today with a 110-70 split. That's very quick on uh, the first hundred. Second is Sophie Taylor, so looks like Molly's not holding back either. No, that's a great first 100 far, and I think she wants to come here and put a stamp on this event. She wants to have a strong heat swim, but you know, like you said, with far by 100 medley, we always get that fourth place at the World Championships and Olympics and it's so disappointing to watch them always just missing that medal so you know we need to get that 100 breaststroke because you know that gold medal silver medal is up for grabs in that relay if they have a great you know 64 65 breaststrokes from her. Well this is all about Molly Renshaw against the clock because I don't think Sophie Taylor is going to catch her here 149 11 at 150 Sophie Taylor is a couple of seconds shy of that Layla Black is in third for Leeds and fourth is Emma Kane. So come on, Molly, bring it home and bring it home in a really good time here. Yeah, Molly's still looking really strong. You know, you don't want her to die over this last 25 metres, but she is still pulling away from the other swimmers. She's still looking long and smooth, and she's looking really, really well at the moment, which is great for the final tonight. 2.26.38 is the time that she set at the Flanders Cup in Antwerp earlier on this year. Sophie is coming back to her, but nonetheless, it's still going to be a rapid time if she can just finish things off here. 2.27 ish. Yeah, 2.27.27 is not shabby for a heat swim from Molly Renshaw. Second place, Sophie Taylor. She goes under the 2.30 as well. 2.29.51. Not quite a personal best, but uh, still a, a decent time. And third place going to Layla Black in 2.31.22. So good job, Molly. And hopefully she can back that up tonight. Yeah, great job for Molly then. That is going to be a great final tonight. We'll have Hannah, Amy, Molly, Sophie all fighting out for that time. And, you know, I think it's going to be a really exciting final. But Molly just needs to, you know, chill out today, rest and get ready for the final to have a great swim. 2.27, 27, fastest time of the morning from Molly Renshaw. Interesting point that uh, that Bob made and, and Joanne there, Kerry Ann, about is our is our field as strong in the women's 200 breaststroke? Because we've obviously got a very strong male-dominated 200 breaststroke team. Well, I think um, the, the breaststrokers that we have at the moment in Bristol are really young, so 17, 18, 19 years old. So they've still got a lot of growing to do. But I do think that we have the potential for you know world domination in that breaststroke as well. So we had Sophie Taylor; she broke the British record at the World Juniors not that long ago last season so that was her first breakthrough meet she only started swimming when she was 12 years old so she's only had six years of swimming so she's got a lot of growing to do she's still I'm sure that those girls are really going to start pushing it on and if Molly can keep pushing on and if you know Sophie can keep pushing on PB here PB there PB here I think soon you know we can have a really competitive brushstroke field for women in Britain so you're quite confident about that that's that's a, a young age uh, for to consider about starting to swim yeah normally you would hear of, of girls 
girls and boys swimming a lot younger than that. Yeah, so normally, I mean, I started swimming when I was four years old, and that's a long time ago. <laughs> and generally, you start swimming when you're quite young, but Sophie came to it quite late on, really. So she was 12 when she started swimming, and now, you know, she's 18 at the moment, only just 18 as well. So she's got a lot of growing to do still, I think, in the, in the sport. And a strong mm -hmm. swim from Molly Renshaw there as well. Yeah, that was a really good swim. I know that Molly has just moved to Loughborough, and she's now training with Kev. She's worked really hard on a lot of her strength work this year. So early season, she was just doing one session in the morning and then gym in the afternoon. And now she's added in another session, so working on race pace. So you can really see that that race pace training that she's done has made a really big difference because she had to do that whole swim pretty much on her own. So she was swimming that swim, doing exactly what she needed to do. I'm, I'm almost certain she was probably counting her strokes to make sure that she was doing the, the right amount of strokes every single length. I mean, that must be so hard, moving clubs, new coach, new teammates. How would that impact on your swimming potentially? Well, it just depends, I guess, on, on where, where you go. It will always take a while to, to get used to the new coach. So there's Indeed. new language, new sessions, you know, instead of saying we're going to do a heart rate set, we're going to do a VO2 set or something. But I'm sure she's well. She seems to be doing really well. OK, well, let's move on now to the men's S14 200 metre freestyle heats. I thought VO2 was a shampoo. That's what I know, isn't it? 200 freestyle. This is our uh, Paralympic swimmers, including the British record holder Dan Pepper, going in this. That is he. Scott Quinn in one for Warrender. Two is Joe Schenk of Newquay. Burnley's Thomas Hammer is in three. Ben Proctor, I mentioned, is in Newquay in four. Dan Pepper, sorry, I didn't mention Ben Proctor, I mentioned Dan Pepper is five. Marple, six, Jack Thomas of Swansea. Seven is Craig Harris of Corsham. And the city of Oxford's Christopher Curry is in lane eight. These are all in the S14 category, which is the... Uh, I was close to what we're calling them these days. I think uh, intellectually... Uh, challenge or words to that effect yeah it's great to see the Paris swimmers here this week we saw the women yesterday set some British record and the men's on the first day so you know they're having a great week so far and they've got their trials next week as well so they're here to kind of have a warm-up meeting their nomination times for the Commonwealth Games are really really tough so they need to get in there have strong swims this morning then to go through to the final tonight very strong swim here by Jack Thomas in lane number six and uh, he's from Swansea also strong from Thomas Hammer and it's going to be those who are close at the turn. It's just Jack Thomas, 58.45. Remember, that uh, British record, I don't think I've told you, have I? Yeah, 201.23 is the British record held by Dan Pepper. And Dan, at the moment, is in fourth place and uh, needs to get things moving. Yeah, that was a great start there, 58.4. Really strong first 100. But, you know, you've still got Benjamin Proctor and Thomas Hammer in there. It's a very close race, and they just need to keep that going. And then you've got Thomas Hammer coming through as well he's had a great third 50 there he's taken the lead in a 130.2 so he can keep that going this is going to be a strong swim this morning for him it could indeed be a british record the way things are looking thomas hammer in lane three is putting the hammer down and nobody else seems to be able to catch him he's uh, pulling away from everybody though ben proctor and dan pepper have realized certainly lane four ben proctor has realized it's time to get a move on so we'll keep an eye on that time 201 23 is the british record time he may just be slightly outside of that can do it in the final of course later on today 202 60 for thomas hammer which compares to 20405 his previous best jack thomas 203 65 and his entry time 204 17 so he's improved upon that and third place to ben proctor who is the british record uh, sorry not i keep getting him and dan pepper mixed up 205 18 they don't look anything like each other either third place for ben proctor that's your one two three in the 200 meters freestyle for the s14s yeah that was a great swim for thomas there you know they'll go through to the final tonight he did start to fade in that last 10 meters so tonight he needs to look up what went wrong on that last 10 meters and just put his head down but you know that's really positive swim to these guys and hopefully they can then recover for tonight and go even quicker because if he can get that british record tonight that will be great for him leading into their trials next week and we're going to move on to the men's 50 meters backstroke just looking down the list to see who's decided to do it William well, Tancock's in the list as you might imagine that's uh, our starting list for 50 backstroke first heat which will contain Oliver Willis 
Benedict Kelleher and Jacob Jezard. They're just going to come on to Paul Dex. So just looking through, you can see the next few. You're going to see Marco Lockrid. You're going to see Liam Tancock, and you're going to see Chris Walker Hebben. So pretty much the names you saw in the 100 last night. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they got on this morning. I think they were all a little bit disappointed with how they got, got on last night. Liam didn't have the time he wanted to, and he didn't feel great in the water, and he was disappointed. And, you know, I all, we all thought that Chris was going to swim a lot quicker than he did. We thought he would have got that domination time, and unfortunately he didn't. So, you know, they need to put them swimmers behind them and get in there this morning and have some strong 50 swims. Best time in the world this year, Camille Lacour, 24.37. Having to look quite a way down before we find a Brit. I'm not sure how she, I've got a Brit uh, at the moment. There's not too many people have done it. Oh, there's Chris Walker Heaven is the first I come across. Uh, 25.43, and Liam's done 25.48. So uh, that's the kind of uh, benchmark times we're looking at for the final anyway. And of course, it being a 50, uh, they don't have to go flat out because they've got a semi final to come later this evening, and then they've got the final tomorrow. So it's one of those kind of just blow the cobwebs away and uh, maybe the uh, the lactate from last night. Yeah, definitely. We've seen that Marco's got a best of 25-0. He did a really good 50 last year at the World Trials. So, you know, his 100 wasn't great last night. He was really disappointed and he didn't look right in the water. So hopefully he can produce a similar time to what he did last year to get him up those world rankings. Oliver Willis. A lot of Willis's down at Bath. There's Andrew. Here's Oliver going in lane number three. Benedict Kelleher in lane four for Bromley and Jacob Jezard for Newbury. It's always on any of the sprints, always good. In fact, we've only got two of them. Only two of them. Who's decided not to turn up? The boy from Newbury didn't make his way here. Oliver Willis and Benedict Kelleher in three and four, so straight head to head. And of course, start all important in the sprints. I don't think there's any hanging around for Oliver Willis here. It's, it's literally just a splash and dash of the pool, the 50 back. So they just need to get from one end to the other as quick as they can and touch that wall first. Benedict Kelleher has uh, started to make his move back, but I think he's left it a little bit too late. Oliver Willis is going to take this and does in 27.59 for Willis. That is just a personal best by eight one hundredths of a second with Kelleher in second place. Yeah, we'll get to the cyclically seeded heats from three, four and five in a few moments time. Sam Strawn also going. Craig McNally, who's uh, had a few good swims already, certainly last week and this week. And uh, Liam Knight, another of the up-and-coming backstrokers to come. So Oliver Willis, winner at 27.59. His time and a personal best for him. On to heat number two. A seven go to start for this one. Let's check if there are seven this time, because <laughs> sometimes they, they catch us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, all present and correct for heat number two. Won't have time to give you all of them, but I just have to tell you that the swimmer in lane five is no relation. Jack Warren Ballard goes for the City of Leicester in lane, not that I'm aware of anyway, in lane five. And Edward Gilbertson of Carradine in lane number four. And this is a real splash and dash and very competitive indeed. And my, and my boy's actually been dropped a bit. Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. This He's is not, not good. He's well, yeah. <laughs> not. No. Looks like it's going to be lane number six, Graham Lyons, who could take it and does take it in 27.07 in second. Second place, uh, Connor Harold. In third place, William Harrison. And uh, Jack. Oh, Jack. As I think I said about a diver at the Olympics in Toronto. Oh, Jack. 27.79. How's that compared to his entry time? Not the time you were hoping no, for, Bob. No. Let the Ballard clan down, Jack. That's terrible. Graham Lyons, 27.01. I'm sure the Ballard family are now watching in, cursing me, and sticking pins in an effigy of me. 27.79 <laughs> for Jack at the end. Right, some of the uh, bigger names. Certainly a big name in terms of characters. Chris Walker Heaven, just about fit him on that screen. Goes in lane four. And uh, Craig McNally in three. Sam Strawn in lane five. Sam started at Plymouth, didn't he? He's uh, now at Loughborough. Yes, he is. He's now in Loughborough at the university. So, you know, his training will have changed. So it, he could improve on how he's doing. But, you know, Loughborough's a great program to be part of. There's so many world-class coaches there. And, you know, they're all doing really well here this week, which is great to see. So what we're going to see from Chris Walker Heaven is uh, come down from 200 to 100. And this is a 50. And it's a very positive 50 as well for him, because really he's got... Uh, 
a big margin for error with the semi-finals to come later on today. Nice and high in the water, Chris Walker Heaven, and he's going to win this by a substantial distance. Not the greatest of finishes, though. That was a pretty poor finish. In fact, he hasn't touched the touchpad properly. Hasn't come, on, hasn't registered a time for him. So that's how poor the finish was. He hasn't touched the touchpad properly. Yeah, he had a massive glide there. Um, I think he could have got away with doing another stroke, but he did have a really strong start, and I think he just wanted to show himself that he is swimming well. We have a time at least, yeah, 25.52, it's all been corrected now, but on the original stats it didn't come up at all. Uh, now we have a confirmed result, there is our winner, Chris walker Heben. That's won it in a time of 25.52, and that's how the rest did. Charlie Balson, 26.42, Craig McNally, 26.61. And Chris Walker Heaven just outside his personal best. The tale of the Liams. Tancock and Knight. Coming up next in lanes four and five. Sam Horrocks as well. There'll be a few wanting to improve upon their personal best. Liam Knight's is 25.95. Sam Horrocks is 26.19. Liam Tancock is the British record holder. And he is in lane number four. Not quite in that kind of form right now after a really problematic 2013, but it's very determined to put all that right in 2014. This is the event where he won his first World Championship medal in 2005 in Montreal, getting a bronze there, and we kind of thought, ah, here's somebody who's going to be a star of the future, and sadly just missed out on the 100 at the Olympics. Yeah, Liam's 50 backstroke has always been an amazing event, and he's always struggled with 100, but I know this year he has really struggled with injury, which is really unfortunate. You know, he's missed a lot of training, but hopefully he can still have a good 50 here. Look at him turn off the burn. Look, just He's easy very in. Easy. Oh, <laughs> get, isn't he just? 25 8 4. Take that. No problem at all. That looks as about as comfortable as you can get on the 50. And he wasn't even fully charged on that. Jack Ness in second, 26.33. And third place going to Liam Knight in 26.56. So, uh, no alarms, no problems, and uh, very comfortable indeed for the man who's disappeared from your screen. Liam Tancock winning that in 25.4. Liam looked really easy there, which is great to see for the semi-final tonight. But I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing Liam and Chris race against each other because even Chris, he had such a poor finish there, and I think he's got a really good time for in the semi-final and final. Now, can anybody beat Chris Walker Hebbins' time in the final heat, which comes up now? Marco Lochran's in there, Joe Patching, and Joe Elwood in the centre lanes. Very disappointing 100 for Marco last night. Never really in the picture. So we thought he might be pushing that Welsh record, but uh, didn't get anywhere near that. And didn't get anywhere near the medal podium either, so he'll be looking to rectify things certainly as quickly as he can on the 50. And uh, we expect him to win this, but he will be pushed by Joe Patching and probably by Joe Elwood as well. Yeah, Marco needs a good 50 this morning. His 100 backstroke last night was not what he was hoping for, but he is looking strong here, and it does look like he is going to take this final heat of the morning. 25.5, the winning time for Chris, and 25.79 is the winning time for Marco Locker. And second place to Andrew. Andrew McGovern in third place. It is Joe Patching in a 26.03, and that is uh, just outside his personal best. So, so not rapid in the morning. Doesn't have to be because there is a semi-final for all these swimmers, all the leading swimmers anyway, to come tonight. And the final of the 50 backstroke will be tomorrow night. So here's the confirmation of the final heat of the 50 backstroke. And Marco Locker and winning it 25.79, winning it by a tenth of a second from Andrew McGovern with Joe Patching in third. So we heard some screaming and shouting there in the crowd. Yeah. We'll find out exactly what that was about. We're not quite sure, but good swimming on all from the uh, from the heats there. Yeah, I think it was a fairly solid morning for the for the backstroke boys. Liam, you know, had a really great start. He had a really good kind of um, push out into the the first sort of 15 meters of his race, which is great because that's exactly what Liam is known for being a really good um, starter, which is really great to see. Um, I think we, you know Chris Walker Heaven. He's still, still in, the, in the first position, even though he was in the 
third of the six heats. So yeah. he'll be looking to, to kind of not redeem himself because his 100 was a good swim, but to, to really show everybody that he was really fast. And Marco as well, having a, a good, strong heat there as well. Yeah, I suspect that noise might have been due to Marco, I think. <laughs> I think I think maybe it was. <laughs> We're not quite sure. We're surrounded by screens here, but we'll find yeah. out for later on. But I mean, strong field there, Kerriana. Yeah, a really good strikers. finish. And you can see that he finished on, on the end of a really long stroke, which um, and he has a little jump back into the water, which is exactly what you want to see from a backstroker. He seemed really confident the, the whole way through that 50. So um, there he is just looking back at his time. He's pretty pleased with his time um, from that 20, from that 50, which is a 25. So I think tonight should be quite interesting. The semifinals, the semifinals again. So some of them will be in different heats. Um, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what Liam can do a bit more rested again for tonight for that, that semi-final. So tactically, rest and then create another performance. Yeah, absolutely. Later. Okay, so now we move on to the women's 50 meter butterfly. Thanks, Hannah. I'll take your advice. I will rest and try and put in another performance for you. First heat of the women's 50 butterfly. Five go to start. One, two, three, four, five. Just checking this time round. Daniel Tomlinson, Leah Allett, Chloe Barrow, Megan Donnelly, and Nicola Reese representing Leicester, Derwin Side, Kelly, Milngai, and Romford Town. Now, who's going to come out first on this one? Looking like Chloe Barrett at the moment. And uh, Nicola Reese is trying to get back into a slipstream, but good, positive, head down performance by Chloe Barrow. 28.27 for her. That's uh, quite a big PB, actually, over half a second on the sprint. That's very good. 28.27 for Chloe Barrow. Yeah, that's a good PB for her. It's also good to see um, Derwent Side coming in second there. Derwent Side was the club that Your I was club. at with David yeah. McNaughty before the Olympic Games. So I do like to see someone from Derwent Side swimming well. Nobody ever knows where it is, though, don't they? Do, do, how often did you get asked that question, where is Derwent side? It's up north. <laughs> I was is that your answer? There. Yeah, up north. Um, it wasn't far from Newcastle, Sunderland, so I used to travel an hour to get there every day to be able Yorkshire, to train. You're kind of North Yorkshire, aren't you? I am. I am from North Yorkshire, but used to train um, in the County Durham area, and great place to train. I enjoyed it. Absolutely. Nobody understands the accent up there, though. <laughs> no, I didn't, and I trained there, so... <laughs> The uh, northeast cabal, as I call it, at Bath. There is starting lineup for uh, heat number two. They all seem to be from the northeast in Bath now, don't they? You've got Dave McNulty, you've got Graham Antwist, you've now got Chris as well. All seem to be boys from the northeast found their way down to the southwest somehow. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how that <laughs> happened. But the change in the axis of the uh, of the earth or something. Anyway, we have all eight lanes occupied here, and I uh, haven't got time to go through all the names for you. Sheffield, Blackburn, Billingham, Aberdeen, Swansea, Sunderland, Woking and Leeds, all represented in heat number two of the 50 Butterfly. And looking best right now is Freya Rayner of the City of Sunderland. Actually, no, it's not. It's going to be Anna Hopkins who's going to come in to win this one. 27.99. Good finish from her. In fact, I'll tell you what, that is a second PB. Nearly eight tenths of a second. Anyway, look at, the, look at her face. She's thrilled by that yeah. and well she should be that was a great swim for 27.99 is such a solid performance and a great pb and you know you can see the smile on her face there which is great to see for a heat swim 18 years old this year hannah hopkin 27.99 she uh, won that a really good finish she wasn't uh, there or there about 25 she certainly was at 50 fastest time so far on to heat number three all eight lanes here as well there are the names. I'll tell you the clubs. Cardiff, Edinburgh, Loughborough, Derwent side. Again, Manchester, Loughborough, Plymouth and Cockermouth in that order. There we go. Let's see whether that uh, 2799 could be improved. Well, should be because there are people who've done times in and around that here. There's 28 brigade, if you like. Including... Uh, a couple of 20 and 21 year olds, Jessica Wilkie and Victoria Heavey in lane number three. She's at Loughborough University, as indeed is Hannah Rogers. So at 25, difficult to call. Yeah, and their aim will be to get that 27 point. A lot, a lot of these swimmers are on 28 going into this heat. So if they can get that 27 point, that's a really strong heat swim for them. Well, we're going to get a couple under there, I think. We'll look at lane one here. Harriet Jones coming into the mix, and Harriet Jones has won it. 28.33, not quite the uh, something. 
28, but uh, she again sprung up from nowhere. Alicia McCrory in second place, and Laura Stevens in third. That winning time again, not quite as quick as the previous heat, 28.33, but that was a, one of those kind of, you have, you're aware of what's happening in the centre. You suddenly, out of the corner of your eye, look at lane one, think, ah, oh, somebody's doing something rather special down there, and she did. Uh, in terms of her best time before today, 28.74 becomes a 28.33. Yeah, great that she produced a PB this morning, and she was not as known as an outside burner, and you get them quite a lot at the major competition. We used to see Becky do it a lot in the 400 freestyle at the World Championship. So, you know, you can't write off them end lanes in these heats and finals. Heat number four of the 50 butterfly. Fiona Hardy of Bull, Harriet West of Leicester, Imogen Clark of DaVentio, Wirral Metro represented by Rosie Moore, Holly Hibbert of Southport, Maidenhead's Constance Dean, Lauren Mills of Stockport and Warrenders, Catherine Stark. They finished 25. And we'll look to see if anybody's really emerging first. Well, Stockport Metro swimmer, Lauren Mills is having a good swim right alongside of Constance Dean, but right down in lane number three, Imogen Clark coming through for the touch. 28.02 it is for Imogen Clark. And again, a big move forward for her from a 28.45 to a 28.02. Fiona Hardy of Paul had done 28.22 here today. Well, previously she was uh, in the 28.5 range and third place to Catherine Stark. So pretty much all the swimmers, certainly the leading swimmers in these heats are doing PBs. Yeah, just missing that 27 point, which I think she might be a little bit disappointed with because it was so close, 0 0.2. She, if her finish had been a little bit different, she might have got that. So we've only had one swimmer at the minute go under that time. So I'm sure we'll see them in these next three faster heats. I have an Olympic bronze medalist alongside me, but here we have an Olympic gold medalist. I know, an amazing, talented <laughs> swimmer in the pool now. But not in this event. Ruta Meliatite, 100 breaststroke Olympic champion, goes in heat number five of the 50 butterfly in lane number five. And again, with every event she does, she's becoming the Lithuanian Hannah Miley these days. As she's uh, doing PBs pretty much every time she goes in the pool at these other events. Yeah, every time she gets in the pool, she surprises me. She does the freestyle, the butterfly. She's just an all-round talented swimmer, and it's great to see her doing other events here. But look at the flying Rachel Kelly. We saw what she did last night, and she's doing it again in the butterfly here. 26.69 for Rachel Kelly is just inside her personal best as well. 26.7. Uh, six it was before 26.69 so seven one hundredths of a second Rachel Kelly has taken off her personal best Ellen Thomas in second place for Guildford and then the Plymouth represented by Ruta Melitite and by Charlotte Ackerson 26.69 by uh, quite some way, the fastest swim we've seen this morning. Yeah, that's a really good swim for her there. We saw her last night come from nowhere in that 100 fly. You know, we were all concentrating on Fran and Siobhan, and she literally just came from nowhere, and she looked really strong on that 50 there. And, you know, she's having a great week, and she's definitely a contender for the 100 free and the 50 fly. On to heat number six of the 50 butterfly. I was slightly concerned about Amy Smith last night. I don't know about you, that she wasn't quite in the kind of form we were looking for from her. She's normally the number two freestyler in the country. Yeah, Amy hasn't had a great lead up to these trials. Um, she has been struggling the water with injury and illness, but, you know, Amy's such a hard trainer. She's training with James Gibson at Loughborough at the minute, so, you know, hopefully she can put that behind her and have a strong performance this morning because they've still got the 100 free to come, which is her main event. Sean Harkin also has had a good week, and a good week last week, too, for the University of Stirling, and she goes in lane number four. We don't have a lane number seven. Eloise Barber of University of Stirling has withdrawn from this one, but we do have seven swimmers, and we have a very, very good start from Amy Smith. So, so all the things that maybe she didn't do in the freestyle, she is doing in the butterfly, and she's leading the way home. She's leading Sean Harkin by about body length. Coming into the wall, Amy, 26.41. Oh, hello. That's a personal best by over four ten of a second, so whatever was wrong in the freestyle, she's rectified in the butterfly. Yeah, that's really good of Amy to get that time this morning. It's really good for us to see, you know, she looks happy with her swim. She wants to put last night behind it, get in here and show that, you know, she is swimming well. She just needs to put it right when she's racing. That was impressive. Good. I'm glad to see that. It's going to be a little bit worried about Amy Essie, but obviously no reason to be if she could swim like that in the butterfly. 26.41, John Harkin 27.19 for her in second. One more heat to come, heat number seven, and uh, there will be a very familiar face, a very familiar name to go in this. Fran Housel 
who is the British record holder, goes in lane number four alongside Sophie Smith and Emma Wilkins. It's also Fran's birthday today. Happy so birthday. a big happy birthday to Fran. Hopefully she can swim well on her birthday. Not too much partying last night. She'll have to save all that till next week. Still got the uh, 53 to, to sort out tonight as well. And she's sorting this one out as well. She's seen Amy go and going, okay, hang on a second. I'm going to have to go here because I do not want anybody going quicker than me in uh, my secondary event or my secondary or third event, if you like, for Fran Halsall. And she's not going to let anybody even get into a wash, into a slipstream. Now, 26 for one it was for Amy Smith. Be that. I have 25.97 for Fran House also the only sub 26 swim of the morning and comfortable and how's she looking? Yeah, she's happy. She happy birthday, happy Fran. That. Yeah, no, she's happy with that swim. She looked really strong in there as well. She looked like she eased off on that last big five metres because she was so far in front. And you know, we we don't know how she's going to do in the semi in the final, but. You know, we don't know how anyone's going to do, but that's a world-class swim for her. That's top three in the world this year. So great swim for her. Looking easy as well, and I think she's got more in her. Third fastest time behind uh, Sarah Showstrom and Jeanette Ofsen. Fastest before today, 26.12 from Fran. She's better that, 25.97 this morning. Yeah, and I can't see anyone touching her in the semi. Well, that was a strong field there, yeah. to say the least, wasn't it? Yeah, well, that's like Joe was just saying there, a world-class time for Fran, top three in the world. She just looks so strong from the dive all the way through to the finish. You can tell that she's really working on those starts to make sure that they're as, as quick and as close to that 15-metre mark as she possibly can get. Because we know that she, at the end of last year, we saw it at in the pool as well. Yeah. Really strong performances, and she put that down to focusing on the 50 metres, because that's her forte, isn't it? Yeah. But what I really love about Fran is that she is the best in Britain in quite a lot of events, but what she's trying to do is trying to make sure that her morning swims are really fast. They have to be fast if she wants to make them through to the semis, through to the finals. So if you can see there, she came up, she went straight for it. She's already half a body length ahead probably more than everybody else in the field. So she just put her head down for the last sort of five meters and um, a really nice ease off on that last stroke, but she finished on a full stroke as well. So she'll be really, really pleased with that. And I think from last night, you know, she was probably a bit upset that she didn't win that 100 fly. So yeah. she'll be making sure that she wins this 50 fly. And Amy Smith as well was mentioned. Yes. Because she had, she's had a bit of a tough time, hasn't she? Yeah, Amy, uh, when I spoke to Amy, she was quite worried about her performances, how she was going to do. Um, but you know, she's had a really great 50 fly then. I thought that was great. Indeed. OK, so now we move on to the last of the heats after that great swim for the women's 50 fly onto the men's 100 metre freestyle. And another event in which uh, Britain needs to step up because we don't have anybody in the top 20 or 30 indeed at the moment of the 100 metre freestyle for men. First heat, Daniel Spears of Millfield, Benjamin Cleverly of Crewe, Julian Chan Kui Lin of Dulwich, and William Murray of Burnley. And again, maybe like the women's turn of breast, the 100 free for men is not moving on. We get people going sub 50, go, oh, that's really great. Well, everybody else is doing sub 48 these days. Yeah, number one in the world this, this year, James Magnuson, 47.5 he's gone, which is a lot quicker than our boys here, and they really need to step up. We saw Ben Proud step up on the 53 and 50 fly last year getting them British records but he needs to see if he can do that in the 100 free as well and we need to see some great times then because you know they've got the Commonwealth Games this year and there is a chance of getting a medal if all four of them can swim well. Well 50 these days I'm afraid is nowhere although these boys will be looking to get down from their 52 times down to 51 and approach that 50 it's a start for them there's going to be a couple going to the wall together Daniel Spears and Julian Lynn and it is Julian Lynn who gets there first in 52.53 that's a mark Marginal personal best for him and Daniel Spears in second place in 52.5. But when we get to the uh, the big boys, is your lad doing this, by the way? Maybe. <laughs> we hope that they won't be going 52.0 in no, trouble. No, no. Where, where is he? I'm trying to find him. Oh, there he is. is, is later it, in the he, he, Yeah, I can see, <laughs> see what your body language is like when we get to your uh, your beloved going in heat number seven. Grant Turner, by the way, because you don't know. On to heat number two of the men's 100 metres of freestyle. Eight going to start. Three, 
Tom Howley of Newcastle, Cameron Brown of Newport, Nico Campbell of Hatfield, John Slater of Basingstoke Team Ipswich, which was represented by Joe Jake Tyson, Miles Monroe of Beaux Azure, Josh Pankhurst of Sussex, and Oliver Brush of Lincoln Vulcans. They've nearly completed the 50. That's probably going to take the scoreboard to separate exactly who's in front, but it looks like good stuff for Miles Monroe in lane number six. And these boys will have the junior final tonight, so they'll have seen the heat in front go 52 5 so they'll need to try and beat that time to have a second swim tonight. Monroe looking good, but now looking even better is John Slater for Basingstoke in lane number four. He's coming right alongside Miles Monroe. They are one and two. Both big boys, as you have to be in freestyle these days. If you're not uh, around six foot or more, then you're not going to be able to be competitive. And that's going to be just Miles Monroe at 51.60 for him. Second place going to John Slater, 51.64, and Jake Tyson in third, 52.16. Yeah, great heat swims for them boys. You know, they've got European juniors this year, so they want to set good times because European juniors, we've had great years there. We've come away with gold medals, silver medals, so we need a nice, strong team to take there, so they'll need to produce that in the final tonight. Heat number three. Representatives from Manchester, Birmingham, Aberdeen, Glasgow, Carnegie, Portsmouth, Stockport, and Ayrshire. <laughs> Sullivan Butt already made finals this year and this week from Aberdeen goes in lane three. Focusing in on Daniel Scott of Glasgow. Two lengths of the pool. I say the uh, benchmark we're looking for, certainly amongst the early heats, is only to get in around the 52nd mark of the can when we get to the last stage. Hopefully, the 49s and maybe up at 48 if we're very, very lucky. The people are on form. And uh, William Condon has gone strongly from the start, but even stronger is Thomas Lytton of Stockport. What a good first 50 from him as the lead to the turn at 24.01. Yeah, that's a great first 50 for Thomas Lytton. He's looking really strong and he seems to be pulling away from the swimmers. He just needs to keep this going. He needs to keep his straight rate up to finish this race strong, but this could be a great performance from him. Now, how close can he get to 50? If he can keep this going, he's going to be uh, certainly in the 50s, maybe around about the 52nd mark. He's not weakening. He's not slacking off. He's going for it here. And 50 point what? 50.70 for the man from Stockport Metro. And that means he's taken a second off his personal best, gone from 51.7 to 50.7. And that is a kind of sizable chunk we've been looking for. Yeah, that's a great swim for him. And obviously we've got the semi-finals in the 100, so that could potentially put him in that semi-final. But that's a second off his personal best. So for him, the next barrier is to break that 50 point, which we want to see the younger swimmers here doing this week. 50.7 compared to 51.7 for Hughes and Boyek. Yian Lloyd going in the next one in lane three. Alfie Howes, former teammate in Cardiff, in lane four. Well, Yian Lloyd, no doubt a great talent. Dave Haller told me at the Delhi Commonwealth Games he thought he could be the best swimmer he'd ever trained. He hasn't pushed on from that, though, sadly. No, he's such a talented swimmer. I know he came from nowhere in the Commonwealth Games. He swam really well, and we all thought he was the one to watch in the future. But, you know, he hasn't seemed to repeat that each year. We've now got James Guy that has come through to take that kind of lead from him. But, you know, Yian has got so much potential. He just needs to show us what he's got. Not showing yet, though, Grant. Mark Quigley is the leader at 50, second Duncan Scott, and third is Otto Potland, and Yain Lloyd has some work to do. He's yeah. back in fourth. Grant Quigley's looking really good. Stockport have had a great week. Grant's obviously Lauren Quigley's sister, so it's great to see them working together, but he's looking really strong with his 10 metres to go. Three all going to the wall together. It's going to be lane five, is it? Duncan Scott? No, just edged out by Grant Quigley, 50.94. So the first time he's been sub 51, that's a, a big move forward for him. Second place going to Duncan Scott, 50.97. Yain Lloyd, 51.15 for Yain. And uh, on paper, that's a uh, best time for him in the 100, 51.15. I'm sure he's gone quicker than that, to be honest, but his entry time is 51.41. Uh, so on paper, at least, it looks like he's gone three tenths quicker. Heat five with Jack Thorpe 
of Edinburgh being the uh, fastest on paper in this field. Checking to make sure all the lanes are in place. There is no lane seven. We've lost Ryan Bennett's decided not to do this, but Liam Tancock's doing it in lane eight. Yeah, I just had to double check to make sure that he was in there racing after that 50 backstroke. But, you know, he's had a great 100 freestyle in the past. He's always been a part of that freestyle relay. And he's been, you know, been such one of the strong contenders in that 100 free. So it'd be great to see how he swims today in it. Sixth of the moment of the turn is Liam. Jack Thorpe leads in second place at Sam Pond. And third is David Thompson. I think he's just uh, doing this for a, a bit of fun, is Liam Tanko. Hasn't really got to. Well, maybe he has got a thought of being on the England 4x1 yeah, team. He's looking really strong at the minute. He just hopefully won't die in the last 10 metres, but he is coming back to them. Looks like it's going to be Jack Thorpe, but Liam Tancock wants to get in the first four if he can. Of course, it's semi-finals later today. I wonder whether he'll do it and pull out later on, but Jack Thorpe does a 50.77 for him. So again, first time sub-51 for a swimmer who wins a race here. 50.77 compared to 51.08 for the Edinburgh swimmer. David Thompson second, Liam in the end, eighth place, 51.20. Oh, Liam, what were you doing there, mate? We thought you were going to be in the top four and somehow some way somebody pulled the plug out he did start off really strong he did get me a little bit excited but yeah he seemed to fade in that less, last 25 meters in number six of eight of the 100 freestyle adam barrett and jack scott in this one university of sterling and lapra university Also, Braxton Tim of City of Sheffield going in lane number three. I want to see uh, Braxton get down those times. We think, uh, and certainly Russ Barber, his coach, thinks he's capable of getting around the uh, 50 mark. At the moment, he's a 50.3 man. At the moment, he's uh, in the wash of a very big man alongside him, Adam Barrett. Yeah, Adam Barrett's had a great season. He trains at the Loughborough TC with James Gibson, and James has said he's definitely one to watch. He's, he's come from the um, university squad, and he's upped his training, and he is looking really strong at the minute, and he's definitely one to look out for because he could shock the 4 by one freestyle relay. Well, at the moment, he's in front. Rob Bale on the outside lane is uh, not too far shy of things either. Braxton Tim's finding the pace a little bit too severe this morning, but it will, I think, be Adam Barrett who's going to bring it home. He is going to bring it home by about half a body length in a time of 49.92 so that's uh, just outside his personal best he's one of the uh, top 50 swimmers we have here and he's about eight one hundredths of a second outside his personal best but first sub 50 swim we've seen of the morning the only one so far jack scott 50.44 kieran mcguckin at 50.51 yeah it's great to see him breaking the 50 mark his best is a 49.8 so he has gone quicker but you know the boys need to get in there and break that 50 in the heat they can't take it easy because they can't do that at the Commonwealth Games so it's good to see that he gave it 100% in that race. Who's this in lane five? Who might this be? Somebody you know quite well? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> when, when is the wedding day by the way? Uh, August the 15th, 2015. So we've got ages, so he has to concentrate on his swimming first. But he is next to Benjamin Proud, who, like I said earlier, he broke the two British records last year, the 53 and 50 fly. So he is a great, strong swimmer and one to watch out because he's still so young. So he's one to look for the future. But, you know, Grant just needs to stick on his shoulder and come back nice and strong. Look at this split. 23-5-3 for Ben Proud. 24-06 for uh, Grant Jackson. And in third place, it is Callum. Jarvis of Bath University. Look at this from Ben Proud. Now, is he going to switch off here or is he going to go all the way to the end? I hope he's going to go all the way to the end. He needs a strong heat swim, but we saw Callum Jarvis in the tuned and freestyle last night have a great swim. So he's definitely swimming well this week. So it is going to be a great 100 freestyle. I think we're in for a great race. Just outside his personal best as well. 49.54, 49.48 is Ben Proud's personal best. Grant Turner in second at 50.10 and third place going to Callum Jarvis at 50.24. Oh, we're wondering, they're wondering downstairs in the truck if the dog is watching this. Yeah, well, we've got two dogs, and I hope they are watching, because they actually like watching the television, so they might be watching I Dad have strange on effects on dogs, so they might be barking now. <laughs> I know, they might like hear I'm my barking. voice and wonder what's going on. <laughs> right. 
It's a madhouse here, isn't it? <sighs> Heat number eight, James Disney May. Over from the US, there he is in lane number five, alongside another guy who's just over from the US, Adam Brown. So the two American-based Brits, Adam Brown in four. I'm hearing James Disney may had a very good yard season in America, so let's see if he can convert it when it comes to the meters. Yeah, the Americans do a lot of racing in yards, and they're always very quick out there, but it's great to see they can, hopefully they can convert similar times to the uh, long course pull, but, you know, Adam Brown had a great year last year. He was swimming really well, and he's always there or thereabouts, and sometimes he doesn't swim how he wants to at the major meet, so he needs to translate that going into big competitions. So the big boys from from the States, who are British and very happy to be so in swimming for them, are side by side. James Disney May in lane number five, Adam Brown in lane number four. Don't forget Chris Walker here, but either he's coming back on the freestyle as well up against the much bigger boys. Is it going to be Brown or Disney May? I think Adam Brown's just about going to get the touch here ahead of James Disney May. He does 49.79, so another sub 50 swim as we expect from them. James Disney May with uh, his best time in meters 49.92. That is a personal best good very good because i had a lot of promise a lot of hope of james disney may in 2012 want it to be realized in 2014 that's a good step towards it yeah and that's four swimmers under 50 points this morning so you know it is starting to move on they just need to move on for the semi-final tonight Okay, so interesting, good swims there, carry on. We've, we've just been talking about Adam Brown and James Disney May yeah. training over in America with a different metric system to over here. Yeah, so there's a huge um, like swimming, se swimming scene and, and everything in America, which is about swimming in short course yards. So right. I, when I was training with Aqua Bears, which was a long time ago when I first uh, moved back from South Africa to Britain, and I trained in a short course yard pool. And when we did sessions, and it was a really hard session, I was going maybe five or six seconds per hundred quicker than I am doing now in a long course pool. So it does make a pretty big difference. But both boys are obviously having a great time out there because they swam really well. It was always going to be tight between um, between the, the finish of these guys. But you know, Adam Brown, he is really tall, and he has just the bigger arm span so he ended up just finishing that race um, ahead of James Disney May then. And how will that affect their performance over here in meters? So it'll be a bit different so short course yards is pretty much a tiny swimming pool <laughs> and then you come here and you've got to some 50 meters so a lot of the time the first in initial reaction is where is the wall I can't wait to turn I can't wait to turn <laughs> and added into that so short course yards there will be three other turns for 100 meters whereas here there's just one turn so there's a lot less time for them to kind of go underwater, have a little rest from swimming, and they just have to swim the whole way around. Um, so there's going to be a lot of lactic acid building up in those guys. There's a lot of testosterone as well. <laughs> At the start of the race, people hitting each other um, left, right, and center. But um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's going to be completely different for them. So to come here and to race long course meters instead of short course yards is always going to take a couple of races to get used to. And do you think that'll have an effect sort of post-race as opposed to clearly they swam very well, didn't they? I think it might just be a little different for them um, psychologically. So when right. they do 100 short course yards, the time will obviously be a lot faster than 100 meters in a 50 meter swimming pool. So maybe that will be the only thing that they think, well, actually it was a little bit slow, but in real terms, it wasn't It wasn't that slow. Indeed, it was pretty, pretty <laughs> quick, wasn't it? Now, this morning's session is just kind of an amazing build up for what we've got to come later on this evening, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm really looking forward to seeing the finals that we've got tonight from the heats this morning. So the 200 bus fly for men, the 200 breaststroke for women. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, Molly Renshaw from tonight. I think she had a great heat swim this morning. She looked really strong. She looked really long. And, you know, that gym program that she is doing now is obviously making a big difference to her to her swimming. Um, we've also got a couple of the 50s. So we've got Fran Halsall. It's her birthday today, so it'd be really good if she could win that 50 freestyle. That'd be a nice birthday. But yeah. she just walked past us there, just looked really relaxed and calm and happy, yeah. didn't she? She was just like oh yeah it's all right not too yeah. bad thanks very much <laughs> um but yeah so it'd be a really nice birthday present for her if she can win that and um it would also be great to see amy smith have a great 50 fly in the yeah. semis because she had a really good swim this morning so as long as she can keep that up and, and go forward i think um she'll have a good job and then i cannot wait i am so
so excited to watch Adam PC swim the 100 brushstroke tonight. So it's the final, it's the big one. I spoke to him last night after the race and, and he did, said, what did he have to say? Well, he said that he took the first 25 a little easier than he normally would. And Which when he is finished, great to hear he's got yeah, more in the tank. Yeah, when he finished, he said, oh, I actually thought I could have done another 50 meters. So I really am very, very excited to see him swim tonight. And all eyes will be on that first 50, to 50 for him if it's faster than last night's first 50. So overall, Kerry Ann, you're impressed with the performances we've had so far at the British Gas Swimming Championships? Yeah, we've had so many number four in the world, number three in the world, number two in the world, and number ones in the world. And, you know, for a, for a British meet, that's exactly what we need. We need to be on the stage, you know, showing everybody that we can be number one, number two, number three, and number four in the world. So the Australians have had their Commonwealth trials. And, you know, so we the benchmark has been set by those guys. And we just keep kind of improving on that and, and getting the British swimmers onto the world ranking system. And who's been kind of a highlight swim for you? Who's, who's kind of performed that you were really surprised with? Because you mentioned uh, some swimmers from your club yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, so there's been quite a few kind of surprise swims in uh, in some of the youngsters as well so it's really nice to see like Katie Stark you know doing a, a PB she's a junior so she was in the junior final doing a PB in the heats the other uh, yesterday so that was really nice as well and um, we have Craig Benson so although they're Scottish and this is predominantly the England trials it still is a top-up event for the Scottish swimmers so mm -hmm. he went under the Scottish qualifying time so he just has to do that again in the final um, so there's quite a lot of exciting things for me as a spectator and as a lover of swimming just sitting here and, and cheering everybody on and every now and then I keep annoying you know like oh she's from my club oh he's from my club or, <laughs> well can't wait to see this person swim but it's just so exciting to sit here and watch some really world-class swims happening indeed and we've touched upon uh, the, the junior swimmers coming mm -hmm. through because we mentioned earlier about the field within the women's 200 meter breaststroke but the juniors are up and coming and we've got some great great swimmers coming through haven't we yeah I think the juniors to be here to be swimming in the pool where the Commonwealth Games will be happening in the summer to see people like Michael James and Adam Peaty, Francesca Halsell, Adam Brown swimming and they get to swim in the same pool in the same lane even as these guys just a few minutes or, or an hour or two in between the two of them so what the experience that they're getting from this must just be outstanding I wish I'd had this, this kind of opportunity when I was a junior because people don't see the, the swim down pool there's another pool here as well so they'll be swimming down and warming up with these yeah. these top top swimmers in yeah. the world so great well I've completely enjoyed this morning <laughs> I know you have as well so we're going to move on this evening where you'll see us kicking off the action at 10 to 6 tonight so that's all the live finals the semi-finals and the finals and the presentations as well be bringing forwards to you on the live stream so we'll see you all back here at 10 to 6 tonight for the action